Let's go talk about robotics, shall we? Let's talk about robots. Well, the time has come, the time have, has come for robots. Uh, robots have the benefit, the benefit of being able to interact with the physical world and do things that otherwise digital information cannot. Uh, we know very clearly that the world is, has severe shortage of, ro of human laborers, human workers. By the end of this decade, the world is going to be at least 50 million workers short. We'd be more than delighted to pay them each $50,000 to come to work. We're probably going to have to pay robots $50,000 a year to come to work. And so this is going to be a very, very large industry. There are all kinds of robotic systems. Your infrastructure would be robotic. Billions of cameras and warehouses and factories, 10, 20 million factories around the world. Every car is already a robot, as I mentioned earlier, and then now we're building general robots. Let me show you how we're doing that. Everything that moves will be autonomous. Physical AI will embody robots of every kind in every industry. Three computers built by NVIDIA enable a continuous loop of robot AI simulation, training, testing, and real-world experience. Training robots requires huge volumes of data. Internet-scale data provides common sense and reasoning. But robots need action and control data, which is expensive to capture. With blueprints built on NVIDIA Omniverse and Cosmos, developers can generate massive amounts of diverse synthetic data for training robot policies. First, in Omniverse, developers aggregate real-world sensor or demonstration data according to their different domains, robots, and tasks. Then use Omniverse to condition Cosmos, multiplying the original captures into large volumes of photoreal, diverse data. Developers use Isaac Lab to post-train the robot policies with the augmented dataset. And let the robots learn new skills by cloning behaviors through imitation learning or through trial and error with reinforcement learning AI feedback. Practicing in a lab is different than the real world. New policies need to be field tested. Developers use Omniverse for software and hardware in the loop testing, simulating the policies in a digital twin with real world environmental dynamics, with domain randomization, physics feedback, and high fidelity sensor simulation. Real world operations require multiple robots to work together. Mega, an Omniverse blueprint, lets developers test fleets of post-trained policies at scale. Here, Foxconn tests heterogeneous robots in a virtual NVIDIA Blackwell production facility. As the robot brains execute their missions, they perceive the results of their actions through sensor simulation, then plan their next action. Mega lets developers test many robot policies, enabling the robots to work as a system, whether for spatial reasoning, navigation, mobility, or dexterity. Amazing things are born in simulation. Today, we're introducing NVIDIA Isaac Groot N1. Groot N1 is a generalist foundation model for humanoid robots. It's built on the foundations of synthetic data generation and learning in simulation. Groot N1 features a dual system architecture for thinking fast and slow, inspired by principles of human cognitive processing. The slow thinking system lets the robot perceive and reason about its environment and instructions and plan the right actions to take. The fast thinking system translates the plan into precise and continuous robot actions. Groot N1's generalization lets robots manipulate common objects with ease and execute multi-step sequences collaboratively. And with this entire pipeline of synthetic data generation and robot learning, humanoid robot developers can post-train Groot N1 across multiple embodiments and tasks across many environments. 
around the world, in every industry. Developers are using NVIDIA's three computers to build the next generation of embodied AI. Physical AI and robotics are moving so fast. Everybody pay attention to this space. This could very well likely be the largest industry of all. At its core, we have the same challenges. As I mentioned before, there are three that we focus on. They are rather systematic. One, how do you solve the data problem? How, where do you create the data necessary to train the AI? Two, what's the model architecture? And then three, what's the scaling loss? How can we scale either the data, the compute, or both? so that we can make AIs smarter and smarter and smarter. How do we scale? And those two, those fundamental problems exist in robotics as well. In robotics, we created a system called Omniverse. It's our operating system for physical AIs. You've heard me talk about Omniverse for a long time. We added two technologies to it. Today I'm going to show you two things. One of them is so that we could scale AI with generative capabilities and generative model that understand the physical world. We call it Cosmos. Using Omniverse to condition Cosmos and using Cosmos to generate an infinite number of environments allows us to create data that is grounded, grounded, controlled by us, and yet be systematically infinite at the same time. Okay, so you see Omniverse, we use candy colors to give you an example of us controlling the robot in the scenario perfectly, and yet Oz Cosmos can create all these virtual environments. The second thing, just as we were talking about earlier, one of the incredible scaling capabilities of language models today is reinforcement learning, verifiable rewards. The question is, what's the verifiable rewards in robotics. And as we know very well, it's the laws of physics. Verifiable physics rewards. And so we need an incredible physics engine. Well, most physics engines have been designed for a variety of reasons. It could be designed because we want to use it for large machineries, or uh, maybe we design it for uh, virtual worlds, video games and such. But we need a physics engine that is designed for very fine grain rigid and soft bodies, designed for being able to train tactile feedback and fine motor skills and actuator controls. We needed to be GPU accelerated so that we, these virtual worlds could live in super linear time, super real time, and train these AI models incredibly fast. And we needed to be integrated harmoniously into a framework that is used by roboticists all over the world, Mujoko. And so today we're announcing something really, really special. It is a partnership of three companies, DeepMind, Disney Research, and NVIDIA, and we call it Newton. Let's, let's take a look at Newton. Tell me that wasn't amazing. Hey, Blue. How are you doing? How do you like, how do you like your new physics engine? You like it, huh? Yeah, I bet. 
I know. Tactile feedback, rigid body, soft body simulation, super real time. Can you imagine just now what you were looking at is com complete real time simulation? This is how we're going to train robots in the future. Uh, just so you know, Blue has uh, two computers, two NVIDIA computers inside. Look how smart you are. Yes, you're smart. Okay. All right. Hey, Blue, listen. How about let's take them home? Let's finish this keynote. It's lunchtime. Are you ready? Let's finish it up. We have another announcement. To <laughs> you're good. You're good. Just stand right here. Stand right here. Stand right here. All right, good. Right there. That's good. All right, Stan. Okay, we have another amazing news. I told you the progress of our robotics has been making enormous progress. And today we're announcing that Groot N1 is open sourced. Group N1 is open sourced. You can see it. 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 没有办法拥有大脑，所以今天他把这个机器人的大脑的模型做了开源 open source 之后，这意味着什么？所有会做身体的这些厂商或者新创公司哦，新创哦，可能一涌而上，他也可以做机器人。那他也可以做机器人，必须要仰赖 NVIDIA 的这个 open source， 意味着 NVIDIA 可以拿到所有人一起帮他做实验的资料。这是很可怕的一件事情。特斯拉会不会完蛋？我们上一期在会员频道在讲的这个 Optimus 的发展，全虚心迷的讲完了。上上一期在讲这个 i s a c Group N One， 刚刚好都提到了这个 Open Source 出来之后，特斯拉竞争对手会变多。华为、小米等等的厂商，优必选，还有博士顿动力等等的这些厂商会一拥而上，跟特斯拉对干。特斯拉的股价破新低，而 NVIDIA 的股价虽然很弱。但是是没有破三月的前角，也就是说，在这个风口上呢，市场对于特斯拉是非常不看好的。目前是这样没有错，但长线来讲，我没有觉得特斯拉一定是这么惨的。特斯拉的 FSD 拥有的是真实世界数据 ，NVIDIA 没有在路上跑的东西啊，它收集的是虚拟世界数据，就是借由 o n i v e r s e 的平台跟 Cosmos 的协作。所以这两个东西是截然不同的，谁好谁坏，我觉得我现在不知道。我觉得 Open Source 可以想到当年的安卓系统跟跟苹果，我很久以前讲过，我觉得特斯拉像苹果，开源系统一定能够把封闭系统能干掉吗？不一定，要看封闭系统的拥护者跟他现在的事情想要发展的项目。所以某种程度来讲，特斯拉还是有优势。可是单就机器人销售的这个项目来讲，特斯拉确实要很注意，尤其现在的新创非常非常快。我不太确定特斯拉怎么应对。Deep Sea 在刚开始开源的时候，两个月内。雨后春笋的竞争对手跟协力常常出来了，两个月内变化会非常快。那我们只要记住一件事情：台湾的供应链一定会受惠，美国传统供应链也会受惠。特斯拉的部分不确定，那我暂时是觉得 NVIDIA 的护城河还是非常优良。这是我马上看完 G T 下会跟大家分享的。那我不晓得你看到了什么，也欢迎跟我讨论。如果你对这个机器人系列呢的议题有兴趣呢？欢迎加入会员频道，我的链接就放在下方。我们会定期追踪最新发展的变化，以跟上这次下跌真的值得买进的公司。我是这一句。